I, I write when you're all very familiar with the principles, so you do a small test. I hope <laughs> that uh, for the so-called empty slide technique. So you will, see, you will see empty slides, and I will ask for your input. But please be sure, though I don't want to write essays on you. Know. <laughs> so uh, I will just begin. And I always begin with the question of why. I think why is such a powerful question. I read somewhere that a small child, maybe Federico, you can confirm, a small child asks why at least 300 times per day. Yeah, yeah, I got one. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so see, it's like a very powerful question. And this is the ah, question okay. I will begin with. Okay. So why do you think we need zero waste? So many reasons. Okay, uh, what is the first reason in your mind? To reduce amount of uh, uh, waste that we are... Uh, Short, sure, please, five words. <laughs> <laughs> to reduce, reduce amount reduce of amount waste. To reduce amount of waste, yes. Anything else? Take soil. Because we create waste. Yes, absolutely. Reduce emissions. Reduce emissions, yeah. Okay. Do we have to transform the paradigm of the economy? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Paradigm shift. Shift economy. Anything more? Maybe live a simpler life. Mm -hmm. Simpler life. Mm -hmm. That is true. We'll stop in tax politics on the linear. Mm -hmm. uh, Stop exploitation, let's do that way. And what are those? Let's uh, um, reduce uh, the need of raw materials. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go for one more and then I'll continue. <laughs> Back into the limits of the system. Oh, okay. Yeah, physical limits. Cool. Okay. We got this. And the next one is uh, I will delve a little bit deeper into the why of the thing. So, why? Well, we're all aware of the plastic pollution, I suppose. It's like in the Mariana Trench, it's in the Antarctica, it's on Mount Everest, it's in our bloodstream now and so on. But I want to go even deeper than that, on a large scale, scale and a small scale. So, as you know, we live on a spaceship. Like, our Earth is like a biological spaceship. And the energy is provided by this big fusion reactor, which we call the Sun, which is not very seen today, but it's still there. <laughs> and it provides us with all the heat and everything. Whereas, all the rest stays within the confines of the Earth. Except maybe a few meteorites fall down here and there, but uh, <laughs> otherwise we are with finite, sorry, resources. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. So uh, also all the waste that uh, we create, it stays within the, our planet, and uh, here. Zero waste and circular economy, just to clarify this first, they're the same shit basically. But uh, anecdotally I found out that zero waste is used when you try to appeal to like individuals and consumers, whereas circular economy is more like an academic business term. But it's the same thing basically. Uh, anyway, yeah, we need for the spaceship and uh, the energy is all here. So here, for circular economy and zero waste, it's very important to know the thermodynamics, like a little bit to know. For example, the second law of thermodynamics, someone, if someone knows more, please uh, correct me, but it states that conservation of energy. So all that energy is not like gone, it just transforms from one state to another. So from oil we get heat, which is like kind of useless energy, unless we need it, and uh, CO2 emissions, which they stay here. So everything stays on this planet except I think a little bit of hydrogen goes out, but I'm not sure about that. Anyway, this is like the big picture, spaceship Earth. Whereas, if we go into like to the molecular level, my body, our bodies, they are all made from materials which was recycled before. 
So we have protein and stuff which was here 500 years ago. And we are like kind of like zero waste machines, you know, as well. And uh, in this respect, we don't know what will happen with like microplastics and nanoplastics and so on. What if we pollute our uh, sources like soil, food, water, everything. And we don't know how this will affect the future generations, you know. So that's why zero waste is also very important to reduce the amount of plastics going outside of the waste management system. And uh, what, what we are having right now is like a so-called metabolic rift. So we consume a lot of materials and they do not return back into the, into the natural cycle. And this is a big problem. So I don't know, maybe like a bad metaphor, but like a person who suffers from like bulimic uh, or the uh, disorder. eating disorder. Yeah, yeah. We basically, as a society, we eat, we eat, we eat, and we don't metabolize it. We just throw it all out again. And you cannot use these materials anymore. So that's why it's also very important to create like a sort of a holistic system that can digest all the materials that we as a society consume. So, we come to the next part. Oh yeah, I forgot about this slide. Um, as Milia was saying earlier, Romans didn't have landfills. Because, okay, societies back in the day, they were like culturally and sociologically complex, but industrially, not so much. Okay, they had a little bit of metals, but they didn't have these industrial processes of creating polymers or like synthetic materials and so on. So back in the day, you just had to take care, of, take care of your sheet, like literally, you know. And uh, in the mid medieval times, then people started, uh, we needed some more collection, especially again in the context of sheet, because then the toilets were invented, because so many people were there and it wasn't necessary. But once we had like a technological uh, progress towards now, we are like, we existentially need this kind of a system that circulates the materials. Because as I mentioned, we live on this spaceship where everything is finite. Except meteorites, but if they fall, it's not that great, you know? <laughs> uh, so yeah, now in this day and age, we need to create an economic system that simulates the natural flows. Like there is no waste in the forest, no waste in the ocean, no waste in the desert. It's, everything is just like, a nutrient for another cycle of life or something. So yeah. And now we go to the nitty gritty part of where do you think all this shit comes from? Sorry? Like all this waste, what do you think are the main sources? Um, if you could if you could like categorize it a little bit, you know. Urbanization? Urban. Urbanization. Urbanization, yeah. Of course cities cities produce shitloads of waste. <laughs> And this industry production, mm -hmm. the industry yeah. of meat, yes. industry, any, any kind of production, I mean. Uh, meat production, yeah. War. Oh, oh, yeah. That's a good one, yeah. Clothing. Clothing. Transportation. Traffic. Transportation. Other consumption. Mm -hmm. Consumption. Yeah, you got this. I would say agriculture is there, I'm not forgetting. Digitalization. Oh. Extraction. Ex excessive agriculture. 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 Uh, yeah. I mean, everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very nice observation. Okay. But I kind of like um, uh -huh, put this down in like certain categories. Here are some of the, yeah, I kind of like single this out, oh, you can see it very well. It's like plastic, e-waste, e-waste is like growing like super fast. And uh, you've probably seen the images from like Agluboshi in Ghana. Where, you know, children, they burn the, the cables to get out the copper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's possible because of a loophole in the international law. The international law uh, prohibits sending electronic waste to different countries. But they say it's not a waste, it's like our humanitarian aid in terms of like used equipment. But when it comes there in like a massive shipping container, it's not really usable anymore. But, and, and, and they don't have any infrastructure, so they just like do what a person does to survive, you know. It's like really bad. And food waste, it would be like 
the third largest country, just after China and America, I think, in terms of that. And, yeah, and, and as we mentioned, it comes from earlier. So, primary and secondary sector of economy, it's like industry, construction, farming, energy, and mining as well. Oh my god, this is an image how much copper you get out of like a mine. And uh, the numbers are like abstract. I don't know the exact figure because it's pointless, but it's like for one kilogram of, of uh, gold, you need like hundreds and hundreds of tons of like waste ore and all the chemicals needed which are required to process this gold and so on. So it's like really a lot. And then we have here yeah, the service sector, like hospitality, you know. We are very close to zero waste. There's just a little bit of foil on top of the, on top of the, the containers we carry. So that's okay, but usually hospitality is like, uh, this is like, the service sector is something that is very visible to us in terms of waste. Mm -hmm. We see it, but we don't see the mining and farming and construction. Although in terms of like food waste, most waste occurs on the field. Like a third of waste happens before the farmer takes the takes the fruits of his labor from the field. And this is mainly because of like standards for like shops or like it rots or like there's a natural incident and carries lot of whatever, yeah. And uh, like that. And as you Gabriela mentioned, military. I mean, only recently has uh, the U.S. military started to follow their uh, CO2 emissions. And it's like bigger than 100 countries, you know, it's ridiculous. And also if you think about all the uh, nuclear weapons, chemical weapons, uh, artillery, like in Arizona, I think there's like a graveyard for airplanes of American military. It's like thousands of tons of planes metal just rotting there on this field, doing nothing. Which is better than doing something because <laughs> it's basic. <laughs> it's basic. And uh, yeah, and household is something that we are very familiar with and we as individuals have like the most power to change this in like our immediate vicinity. And uh, what tourism would be Yeah tourism is like yeah hospitality also. But okay. tourism yeah it's a good one. Mm -hmm. Okay so we are here again with the interactive part. <laughs> what does zero waste do? Help your life. Help your life. Very nice. Balance with the nature. Mm -hmm. to, to use things that have multiple use and then to reuse them in many, in many ways. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Minimalism. Mm -hmm. Resonance. Mm -hmm. Resonance. Resonance. Resonating. Resonating. Oh. Yeah. Resonation. Mm. A lot of thinking. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Creativity. Yeah. One more. Um. I say funny one. Cutting. <laughs> Yes. Cutting. Yes. 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 Caring. 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 Not caring. 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 It's more work. It's actually. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's more work for you, less for other people. Yeah. Well, because packaging means work for other people that like you have to. Awesome. Okay. Saving. Nice. Nice. Okay. Saving. In an essence, saving. Saving your resources. Saving mm -hmm. uh, natural resources. Exactly. Cool. Okay. I go back to screen. So this is the definition. I borrowed this from like uh, Mike Kripsalo. He's like a PhD in engineering, so he knows his stuff. He expanded the zero waste definition to you know to have it as holistic as possible. And yeah, you can like read it, and it's really like kind of difficult to say what really is zero waste, but because it's like so much. It's like uh, Natasha was saying yesterday, like the holistic approach to sustainability. It's not just ecology, it's not just ecology, it's like all together. And again, zero waste is like, you try to look at all the aspects of where waste occurs and you try to like minimize it. But is zero waste really possible? You know, yeah. I mean, if you have that to pay yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like the, like the first 
that, that slide with like, with you, you need a yeah. progress management back in the day. So it depends with the context, of course. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, but my idea of how I see zero waste is like, it's like a path, it's a way. You cannot go from to zero waste like in day one because we live in a society which is very consumerist and you go to a shop and you buy plastic, you know, you cannot really avoid it. Unless you're like uh, a mother of my French flatmate back in Glasgow, she went to the shops and when she bought fruit, she tear down all the plastics and left it there and just took the, the sticker with the barcode and went to the, you know, the cash in. But that's kind of, kind of time consuming and annoying for the workers. So, yeah. But, yeah, we'll come to the solutions soon. Anyway, as I was mentioning, uh, zero waste has a lot to do with like thermodynamics. So, the best thing to do is to use the, the least amount of energy possible. And to do this, you say no. You say no, I don't want this thing, I don't want that. Because when you say no, you are not buying into this mega machine of production, you know. But if you have to say yes, because yeah, okay, my I cannot mend my clothes anymore, I have to buy new ones. But I can go to like a second-hand shop or something, you know. So you reduce consumption and use something that already exists. And then uh, it's like reuse and recycle and rot. So these are like the so-called five R's, which some of you might be uh, familiar with yet. But there is more. There are now 38 R's. <laughs> it just doesn't end. Once, once you like, uh, <laughs> once you go into and you start a lot of thinking, yeah, you start thinking deeper, and you see so many solutions now. So first, like uh, refuse, reduce, reuse, and then they had like rot and that other one, but now it's like so many because people were starting to realize that the system has to be changed more than the consumer, and now uh, we have all these R's that are. Uh, connected either to the industry, either to municipality, to individuals, to everything. And it's also, I, I kind of like this, that it starts with, like, that it starts with R and E, so re, re. And uh, <clears throat> this kind of shows that we need like a regenerative economic system. Something that brings back more than it takes. If it's possible or not, I don't know, we, we can have a discussion over a bear and brainstorm. But uh, we'll see about that. And here we are now. You've probably seen this famous butterfly from Ellen MacArthur Foundation. This is like a graph for circular economy for like uh, the people to see how it's done. Basically, again, we return to thermodynamics. The best thing to do is to use the least amount of energy possible. So the smaller the circuit, the better it is. And uh, for example, in my pocket, I have this so-called telephone. And uh, when I bought my first smartphone in 2016, on their website it explicitly stated, do not buy our phone unless you really need it. <laughs> <laughs> so they really went into it, you know, but it's made in a way that I can maintain it. You can uh, take it apart and you can, it's, it's like modular, yeah? So you can unscrew parts and you can repair it yourself. So it's very good in this, in this uh, way. And uh, also they have like this buyback mechanism where you can but they buy back your old phone. So I had my phone two for six years, and then like a couple of months ago, I bought a new one. But they bought my old phone back, and they're like either reselling it, or they are uh, refurbishing the parts, or recycling the parts. So this is like one example of how the technical flow works. And here we have the bi biological flow. I mean, it's, yeah, it's self-explanatory, but this cascades for a lot. Here is an example. I love this beam. It's amazing. But what do you think we should do with it to be zero waste? With what? This beam. What should we do with it if we want it to be zero waste? To keep it, to, to maintain exactly. it. Exactly. Maintenance is. <coughs> look at it. You cannot buy this. It's like probably from like old growth forest, trees that don't exist anymore. It's been like eaten by worms. It's uh, it's been through like time and space. Entropy affected it. It's beautiful. I mean, it has character. No, it's priceless. You cannot buy a material like this. But if you are renovating a house, 
and it's, it's not like uh, possible that it, it's not a load bearing beam anymore, it doesn't have the structural integrity, then the cascades come in. So, in terms of the cascades, you take it out, you kind of like cut it in a way that you can maybe use it for like a garden shed or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then 20 years after, the garden shed, you know, it's, it takes its time, and the garden shed is not used anymore, you can use the beam as like a raised garden bed, and you can put it on your garden bed, you know, for like your small garden. Mm -hmm. And uh, once the, the elements take care of it, you cannot use it anymore, you can like burn it, which is mm, okay, maybe you get some heat, or you can uh, make wood chips out of it and put it back into the garden as like a pot or something. So, uh, yeah, but this is like a very famous butterfly, this graph, but, but now we'll go to the official European Union graph and uh, you will see the difference. Um, so yeah, it's fucking inc incomprehensible, you know. <laughs> but you know it's official because here you have places. <laughs> 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 yeah. and, uh, 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 here it says like 650 million euros for this circular economy package and so on. But I will try to translate this now for you. And this is uh, like a simplified version. As you can see, it's uh, on four pillars. Us, we can affect only this pillar consumption as individuals. Everything else is like based on kind of like industry. And here are like the, the actors, you know, we have uh, business, citizens, member states, and organizations like ours, for example. Mm -hmm. And uh, the priorities are, are of course plastic. They recognize that plastics are like mm -hmm. an unknown phenomenon and that we really have to take care of it. It's like a novel entity which only arrived now. Mm -hmm. And we have no idea how it affects, and there's too much of it, so it's the priority of the ego. And then it's food based because of the methane emissions, you know. Methane is like what, 86 more potent time than, yeah, than CO2. Although its half life is much smaller, but it's like a catalyst for climate change. So food based is like extremely important thing, especially now with all the crises around the world. And then, yeah, critical raw materials and construction demolition waste, it's like the biggest waste stream in the EU in terms of like mass. It's around 800 million tons per year. Again, extra number. But yeah. <clears throat> and we have, I hate this word, so I will not talk about it. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> and uh, yeah, so eco design, for example, like the telephone, is like, you know, zero waste circular economy, it begins at the drawing board. It begins in your head. <clears throat> you have to like kind of, if you're a business or whatever, you need to create a product that can be reused, recycled, and so on. And with this you can get also maybe bigger customer engagement and so on. But this is like marketing stuff. Anyway, and byproduct is a very important thing because, for example, uh, if you want to use this beam again in another house, you couldn't do it because it would be classified as waste. And you can legally not use waste. But if waste is classified as a byproduct, which is usually done in the circular economy, then okay, let's go for it, you know. But uh, there also need to be like standards for byproducts, which is very hard to achieve because look at it, it's unique. How can you compare this one to that one? And so it's very difficult to create standards where business could not operate. And then we have also like best available techniques and brief like reference documents and so on. So this basically means one company is doing something good, one organization is doing something good, let's open access the sheet out of it and share it, you know, so we can do it as quick as possible. And then yeah, labeling, moral aging is also a good one, because look at all the electronics, everything breaks down after five years, you know. So moral aging is like a term that you make electronics and other equipment last for a longer time. It's like the opposite from plant obsolescence. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like cure. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. yeah. And then uh, green procurement is mostly for like municipalities when they have like uh, big orders and stuff like that. And they are equal design and availability. I talked about this. Uh -huh. And here it's like we have waste management. These are the kind of the goals 65% recycling rate, uh, disposal in land fees in EU 10% because the rest will go to Serbia. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, they are 
much nice doors, but we should re reduce it first, is my opinion. And yeah, okay, so we have the standards for fertilizer regulation. People who are working like on the farms and stuff, they know about like the synthetic nitrogen, for example, which leaks down into the groundwater and so on. So it's like super important to regulate the amount of nitrogen applied to the to the field. And also like recycled water and uh, yeah, chemicals, the production waste. I mean, we need to create so many new processes to use this waste, you know. We need like technologies to like de de vulcanize de plastify de pol de polymerize, pol polymerize, de pol polymerize things. All these technologies which don't exist yet, if you want to use the materials which are not buried on the landfills. So this is also like a priority in terms of like R&D, that we uh, invent these technologies as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. And, okay, here you are now. What do you know? Give, give me some examples of zero waste. Something that you do, you know, you, you saw someone doing. Composting your bio, uh, green okay, bio waste. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 a lot of overlaps. Using like um, bags that are reusable and not plastic bags. Mm -hmm. Oh, the classic one, yeah. Second <laughs> yeah. hand mm -hmm. Also free shots. <laughs> <laughs> Garbage separation. A direct relations between productions and consumers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good one. I do oh, this, yeah. this in the farmer's market. Uh, that jams which I bought, I usually take the glass, the container back to the woman and she like cleans it and then does it again. So there's a lot of waste that is avoided in this relation. Mm -hmm. You can use biological <coughs> fertilizers, like you can put sip in your field and they're gonna sip the field. <laughs> you have fertilizer. Yeah. Okay. Upcycling old things. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Cool. Can I have okay. um, two suggestions? Maybe a slightly different one is educational project. Mm -hmm. In the second is uh, zero waste cities. Mm -hmm. Some, something that you are doing very well. I think. Yeah, that's cool. And it's a great experience of your team. Let me see. Oh, it's Artistic installations. And oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I ordered the full screen, that's sorry. <laughs> okay, so here is like on personal level. Yeah, yeah, we talked about food, you know. You can go with your own bag to the food. You can buy, you can do like naked shopping, you know, fruits without the plastic. You can have. Uh, direct relationship with consumers, stuff like that. You can uh, dumpster dive, it's yeah. also a good thing. And then hygiene, okay, hygiene is like, I don't want to mansplain menstruation, <laughs> but <laughs> there's like, you know, instead of tampons, tampons and stuff, you use like the diva cup. My ex-girlfriend was using it and she was so happy with it. So. <laughs> it's, uh, in, uh, just across the border, there's usually these uh, big festivals, so like punk rock festival, metal festival, the reggae festival, and they use reusable cups for like beers. Mm -hmm. So it's like a harder plastic and you can have it for the entire event. Mm -hmm. So this is like one way to reduce the and amount of... And if you bring it back to the end of the festival, you can bring it back to your... Yeah, deposit, yeah, yeah. yeah. you can deposit. Yeah. And also like uh, exchange and sharing events, you know. Mm -hmm. You come somewhere, you have questions. No, no, that's just like... Oh, just <laughs> uh, and like, yeah, sharing events. It's like, uh, it's very popular also back home to have like clothes swapping events. Mm -hmm. So you bring your old clothes and you take someone else's old clothes and, you, and in fact, you get new clothes, mm -hmm. which is very nice. Facebook. Yeah. And now we are on the system level. So circular economy, I talked about it. Oh, right to repair. Oh, shit, day. <laughs> the thing is that, like, for example, Apple is notorious in this. Some guys in like America or Canada, they started doing videos on YouTube how to repair iPhones. Immediately, a lawsuit worth like millions of dollars. You know, what? Wow. What do you do? You cannot repair our stuff. You know, it's ridiculous. <laughs> and uh, so, right to repair that. If if I buy a product, I consider it 
as like part mine, part future generations, you know. Because when I die, who will have it? Someone else, you know, will have the materials inside. So you should have the right to repair your products and also like uh, guidelines how to do it. And companies should be forced to do this. Yeah. Fuck the profits, you know. I want the materials to be in, in uh, life cycle for as long as possible. And also another thing I think which is very important is like moratorium on products which cannot be repaired, recycled, upcycled, uh, reused or whatever. So a computer could not be sold on a market if you cannot easily repair it, you know, if you cannot reuse certain parts of it and so on. But this is like, yeah, you need the state to enforce this. But it's like the only way to kind of cut back on this needless consumption. But it does it anyway in products. Almost all the products we use are subsidized in by in some way by the state. So you can you can do that. Yeah. If yeah. they want it to. But in the political will to do it, yeah. which is you know lobbies. Okay. And uh, yeah, tax on plastics is something that came out recently and on CO2 packaging as well. We have this in Slovenia now, it's like a small tax on packaging, but doesn't really help. But these uh, taxes are super important if you want to create a system of reverse logistics, you know. So instead of Coca-Cola being in a plastic bottle, it should be in a glass bottle like it was years before. But to achieve this, you need like trucks that will carry to the shops and then back from the shops to the distribution center from the distribution center back to the refill center. And glass is much heavier than the plastic. And glass is much heavier, exactly. So for the producers, plastics is like amazing thing, you know. They don't have to care about it at all. Whereas for the glass, to have the entire reverse logistic system, it's a complex process. And uh, therefore, there should be incentives. So we're going to tax the hell out of you, but we're going to give money to this guy who tries a good thing, you know. So incentives are very important, but I put here business, but it can be for like organizations, Social exactly, yeah, 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 like everything. And also like uh, I actually wrote an essay which was published in a book called Anarchist Political Ecology, um, something, something, Natures of Emancipation, yeah. <laughs> and there I argued that circular economy cannot work without degrowth and social ecology. Oh, no yeah, and uh, this is how I will end. So you will now identify what's missing. The name of the book you have written. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like any, any ideas? I talked about zero waste, circular economy. Is there anything more that could be holistic? Some more about it. The culture, the worldview. The world. Yeah, exactly. I have small observation. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, I I have noticed uh, that uh, sometimes zero waste concept is uh, uh, not sometimes, but generally often mis misunderstood. So we are today over flooded with different. Uh, tools and small small things that we can use in in uh, our everyday life, uh, and they are produced in, in uh, uh, countries uh, which are known as a uh, big pr production countries like China and something else. And we are over flooded with a lot of tote bags, uh, bottles, and so um, I see that uh, someone or some some co big companies use that to, to sell new new uh, new types of products also we have sustainable fashion which is not definitely sustainable it's not sustainable if we just put some green label exactly. uh, we have many many different products which are uh, false green and false sustainable and false uh, false zero waste and uh, very often those kind of products are very expensive and uh, no no Mm -hmm. uh, available to general public and this morning uh, yeah. I talked with a couple of girls about uh, solid soaps mm -hmm. for washing hair and uh, body mm -hmm. uh, and very often they are very expensive so uh, general mm -hmm. people cannot afford so how to solve mm -hmm. this problem yeah, I will put this down co-opted by capital yeah. yes yeah. a huge amount of waste comes from the building sector yeah. huge as you mentioned so a natural building used to be and will be 
for sure. And uh, the way we're gonna build again, uh, because it is zero waste. Mm -hmm. And so. huge, huge problem with waste on other way we build is also uh, ownership. Because mm -hmm. many buildings just fall apart because they are not used because they're owned by people who don't want to give it away. True. Uh, so laws on that which start coming in about how much years you have you can use a building and if it is not used you should do something about it uh, is also something. Uh, yeah, natural building it's zero waste. Uh, okay. Building. Um, is done. I can go next slide. Okay. I wanted to do this because I wanted to show you this amazing image which I found on the internet. And it's like, you know, zero waste is like a path. It's like neutral. I mean, I, when someone says something is ideologically neutral, it's probably not. <laughs> but uh, zero waste is kind of getting there, you know. It can be done in capitalism, socialism, anarchism, barbarism, whatever, you know. Uh, because it's like very thermodynamically integrated. But it's like a path. First, yeah, you mentioned privilege. Yeah, of course. Everything that starts in capitalism, first rich people buy it. And then rich people be feel good about themselves. You know, look, uh, I, I, I wear these shoes, they were 110 euros, they're worth from nine plastic bottles. Yeah. I'm so zero waste, you know. <laughs> but is it accessible to everyone? And uh, these are the questions which then come from this and lead towards a better society. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that zero waste is also like uh, very politically easy, you know. From the entire spectrum, from right to left, you can say we all hate waste, in a sense. So it's easy to use it to try and build a better world out of it. Yeah, yeah we say that, but in a capitalist system where profit is uh, the priority, Coca-Cola, for example, wouldn't want to make glass bottles. Uh, of course, yeah. yeah. So it's more difficult in a sense in the capitalist system. Mm -hmm. No shade for it, we have already a plan to go out to the planet when the planet is destroyed. So I don't think it's... Yeah. Like... No question? No. Okay. And also, like, uh, the thing with zero waste, again, I, I like your question or the privilege, I mean, the comment. Some people are doing this like all the time, indigenous communities, uh, people in poor neighborhoods and so on. They do this, but they, you just don't call it zero waste. It's mm -hmm. like something fancy which is now here. Yeah. And, like, our grandparents, they were doing zero waste because after the war there wasn't much materials available. So for me, zero waste was something which I internalized through kind of like my grandmother because you know she was saving everything. And I was like, okay, this is so logical to do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, with this I kind of concluded, but if you have a time for a short game, let me know. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yes. Yeah. So, the story of paper. What is the best thing to do with the paper? Now we gotta see, it. you can do for paper like art as you mentioned, you can do biogas and so on. But how does it uh, connect to the zero waste definition? So, recycled paper. Conservation of resources by means of responsible production. Is recycled paper responsible production? It is responsible production. Yeah, so for example, paper in general uses a lot of water. But you don't have to cut trees. So it is responsible if you use it very rationally. If you are using it in a enormous unrational amount, it's not responsible yeah. production. But if you are very aware of the price of that recycled paper and you respect that paper which are you using and use it in a responsible way, okay, I think that we can say that it is responsible Good. production. Yeah. And yeah, it's also responsible consumption, then again it depends on various contexts. Yeah. I think it, it's very important to know the source. And if the source is a managed forest, and we know that it's a managed forest that actually has a regeneration rate that actually can sustain itself in many years, mm -hmm. then it can be a responsible production. Yeah. It's a managed forest, eh? it's not a biodiverse forest yeah. as we imagine forest, mm -hmm. it's a managed forest. But anyway, if the reproduction rate is uh, it's good enough, then you can produce paper from this forest. Mm -hmm. And also like these charges to land and water, as I mentioned, 
recycled paper, this paper in general, uses a lot of water. So in terms of like water, it's not maybe that great. And also, we have another type of recycled paper, which is like more artsy. Mm -hmm. And we are talking about yeah, the intentional use of paper. And this is like much more intentional than the other one, but not as accessible as the previous one. You know? It's quite more expensive. And then paper bricks. Do you think this is like a responsible uh, re uh, recycling of paper? Mm. It's for building. Yeah. Okay. Isolation. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Isolation is good, yeah. But I mean, would what you need to use, uh, like, compared to what you would use to make a normal break, probably it's not worth it. Yeah. It's probably like less energy intensive, but would you live in a paper house? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's for insulation, man. It's not for a building. It has no yeah, outside yeah. or inside. Well, yeah. well, well we, we come to this part now, yeah. But this is very good, yeah. This is okay. I mean, it's very dangerous if you build a house from bricks of paper, but this way, in this way, it's okay. Insulation is good um, because it has like a high thermal mass and so on. So the heat penetrates it slowly and also it gives out heat slowly. Yeah. It's cold outside. And uh, it's also like one of the things is that it doesn't discharge back to the environment, at least not for like 100 years. If it's in a building, it's like in a very uh, closed space, closed system. So it just stays there, you know. It's like captured carbon. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So sorry. Mm -hmm. So yeah. And then cement wall. Paper cement wall. It exists. I, I touched it. It's nice. Sorry, paper uh -huh, cement wall. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Mm. Like compared to paper bricks, what would you say? Um, wasn't it made It's like cement and paper and water. Oh. So what happens to it after 20 years if it's a mixture of cement and paper? It dissolves. Soap. Soap. Dissolves. Dissolves. No, no, no. 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 Land field to Serbia, we did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wouldn't be this. It would be good enough material for this. Mm -hmm. There is many techniques that actually, when you use a bit of cement, you can do. Yeah. Cement is actually miraculous. Uh, yeah, that's, that's why we use it so much. Use, but if you use it correctly, yeah, not yeah. just pour it on the floor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Okay, so yeah, it's a good thing. What else do we have? Oh, paper art, it's unmentioned art. And yeah, this I think it's like the highest value that you can give to like a paper. Okay, there are like questions about utilization, usability, but it's nice, it's aesthetic. And it's like also like the educational factor, you know, I think it's very important to have. It shows this like sculpture and tell a story about paper. Okay. So, uh, Okay, I think this is the last slide. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh,